Hey everyone. So we've looked at a few other companies so far. Uh, Magic, Games by Apollo, and 20th Century Fox. We've kind of run the gambit from good to disappointing to, oh my god, why did you do this? So now we kind of move on to a company that's just sort of average. And an average company needs an average name, and that is US Games. It took them a little while to actually get into making Atari games, and once they did, they just seemed to shoot a whole bunch of them out and then disappear as quickly as they got into making Atari games. US Games started in 1978, and they were originally making a bunch of handheld electronic sports games, which I have not been able to find, so yeah, that, that just kind of happened. And then, in 1981, they were bought by Quaker Oats. Because, why not? It, it was Atari in the 80s. Of course, a breakfast cereal, or in this case, an oatmeal company, they need to make video games, too. From 1981 to 1983, they made 14 games, and then just kind of disappeared. One kind of interesting thing, of the three interesting things that I'm really going to talk about, is that they first released games as VidTech. I don't know why, they just kind of did. After they released a few under VidTech, then they switched over to making them under US Games, which they probably should have done from the very beginning. The first game that I kind of want to go into is Space Jockey. Not because it's a particularly good game or an interesting game, but because of who made it and kind of what happened with his story. Space Jockey was made by Gary Kitchen after he taught himself how to make Atari 2600 games and also managed to build his own development kit for the Atari 2600. Kitchen would also go on to port uh, Donkey Kong to the Atari 2600 and work on a couple of other games like Keystone Capers and Pressure Cooker for Activision. But what made him like really impressive was the actual development kit and teaching himself how to make Atari 2600 games. This wasn't something that was just done at the time. You normally couldn't just go and make an Atari 2600 game if you didn't actually know how. So it's really impressive that he was able to figure this out on his own and able to actually do this stuff. In a move similar to how Activision got started, uh, Kitchen tried to get more money out of, it, out of the company he worked for because he was doing a lot of work. They refused to pay him, so he ended up leaving. Yeah, that's kind of pretty much it for that part of the story. Now, now we can get to probably the funniest one. Uh, yeah, the, this one is called Name This Game, which, <laughs> uh, it was called this because U.S. Games came up with a pretty good idea. They had a contest where you would name this game and you would be able to win some money. It wasn't a bad idea. It was a fairly decent marketing idea. Uh, as far as I know, nobody ever won. Uh, this is the actual game. You play as the scuba, di scuba diver down at the bottom. You have to fend off the sharks, which actually look fairly decent for Atari sharks. You know, they, you can kind of tell what they are. And you also have to fend off this, the, the giant octopus, which seems strangely larger than what it really should be. And you should probably be more worried about that than the sharks, but that's just my opinion. You're trying to defend a lump of treasure, which is supposed to be that weird colored thing just above your, you know, just above the timer and your oxygen meter. That was kind of one of the cool parts. You had to deal with, you know, losing oxygen in this. And yeah, every so often they'd throw down an oxygen line. You'd have to catch it and refill your meter and you'd be good to go. But the contest was supposed to end on April 30th, 1983. Like I said, I don't know, but it doesn't seem like anybody won it as the company went defunct by then. However, in 1994, the contest was kind of like re-sponsored and it was run again, this time by Digital Press. 
and the winning name ended up being going under. Sure, I mean, <laughs> it kind of works. There, there were some other weird names as well, which kind of fit, but, you know, going under just seems, you know, kind of stupid to me, but whatever. But let's kind of move on from that. I mean, the contest is really funny, and Space Jockey has kind of a cool story behind it, but there are 12 other games to kind of talk about. Uh, I don't have all 12 of them. I had eight of their, sorry, I don't have all 14. I have eight out of the 14, and I was able to get most of them to work. Some of them I was kind of upset that I got to work, but, you know, for the most part, they were all okay. Uh, the weird ones, though, they had two that I kind of think are like Missile Command clones. You saw the first one earlier and this the second one. They're not that great, mostly because when you add Missile Command, you're moving a cursor around the screen and you have at least some control at least some control with the 2600. With the arcade game, you have a lot more. Uh, with this one, you don't do that. You are basically just trying to move your gun around in one of basically five directions. It's not very good, and I really, really hated it. Then you got into like some of their more unique games, like this one, which was basically hide-and-seek, and I didn't actually know that it was basically a two-player game. It's kind of a cool idea, though. You have one character moves the gray person around, he hides, and then the white person tries to find him. Ideally, you're not looking at the screen at the same time, but, you know, whatever. And then you've got Entombed here, which is kind of a, another pretty neat game. Uh, I don't really like the way it controls, but it's still kind of fun. You're moving your weird little dude down as basically the screen just scrolls up. It is possible to die on this one, which kind of sucks, like you saw I did there. But it's kind of a cool concept, and I, I really liked it. So while you add a bunch of clones and you know a few kind of cool and unique games, it seems like they were kind of able to stand out, but not really enough to keep going. I totally understand why Quaker Oats wanted to get out of the video game industry. I mean, they did it right, like, at the right time. So, it made sense why they left. It made sense why they entered, and it made sense why they left. And they just kind of seemed like a pretty average company. They didn't have anything that was a big hit. They didn't really have anything that, st that stood out. They tried to use the contest to generate some buzz, but it just didn't seem like it really did enough. I mean, that, oh god, that contest. Um, it, like I said, it was a it was a good marketing idea. It just seems really stupid to release a game called Name This Game. I mean, like, what are you supposed to do for Christmas? Like, hey, hey, Johnny, what do you what do you want for what do you want for a present? I want name this game. Okay, sure, <laughs> just whatever. A anyway, guys, that was uh, that was U.S. Games. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and have a great day, everybody.